Hey what's up guys, OSG here and it dawned on me the other day that I have done two videos on the worst arcade parts but never done them on the best arcade parts, so I need to get them done now, and today we will be starting with the Commodore 64. Arcade parts were renowned for being all about the fast turnaround while the arcade games were still in demand, so we know we got a lot of bad ones, which we have seen in the previous videos, but every now and again we got an absolute classic, and even in recent years, games have been developed to rectify some of the wrongs that were inflicted on us. So without more delay, let's take a look at the 20 best Commodore 64 arcade parts ever made. Kicking us off in 20th place is Bionic Commando. It's weird that two games on this list were also on the worst list, but that's down to regional differences. In the worst video we saw Capcom's version of this game, and it was dire, but Go's version is much better. In fact, I like it better than the arcade, as the Sid music adds a bit more to the game for me. 19th place is taken by Akari Warriors. And this is the second of the duplications as we saw the US version in the worst video. This version is everything that that version wasn't, and for me it is the best out of all the 8-bit versions of the game. The character moves fast, and compared to the arcade scene here, it's not that far away from being perfect. Gyrus is in 18th position, and this is a cool old school shooter with a different view to what we were used to. It's kind of like Tempest without the vector type game. Anyway, it was hot in the arcades, and the part of a C64 is awesome with smooth rotation moves and pinpoint hit detection. The aspect ratio is the only thing that I think lets this down, but it's still a great port. In 17th place we have the New Zealand Story. Now I wasn't the biggest fan of the New Zealand Story in the arcades, and although I had it on the C64 when I was a kid, I wasn't too much into that either. That doesn't mean that it's a bad game though, it's just a bit too nice for me. Personal preferences aside, this is a truly great arcade port that captures the feel of the arcade game perfectly, and let's face it, it looks and sounds great. 16th place is taken by The Simpsons Arcade. Now this is a game that me and my mates would hammer in the arcades. It's much like the Turtles Arcade in mechanics, but unlike the C64 Turtles game, the developers did a class job porting this to the system. I never even knew that this game was out as a kid, which is weird, as I loved the arcade so much, and a young OSG spending his pocket money on this would have made him a very happy boy. Turbo Outrun is in 15th position. Again, a game that wasn't one of my favourites in the arcade. If I had the choice of playing this or the real Outrun, the original would always get my money. The C64 port, however, is one of my favourite racing games as it looked and played so good, and the intro music is one of, if not the best bits of music ever to come out of the Sid. When I was putting this video together with a side by side view, I realised just what a good job they did with this. In 14th place we have Track and Field. This is still one of my favourite arcade games ever, and if ever I see it anywhere, it always gets a play from me. The C64 version was as good as it could get for me outside of the arcade. The events all played as good as the arcade, but joystick waggling was always one of my weaknesses. My best mate, however, was a waggling king, and used to blitz my records all the time. 13th place is taken by Salamander. We all know that I'm a sucker for a good shoot 'em up, and Salamander was no letdown in that department. Back in the day, this was the best side scroller out there for me until R Type came along a year later. The C64 version is so polished, and apart from the graphics, which aren't bad at all, it's almost identical to the arcade version. Shinobi is in 12th position. I don't think anyone here won't have played or at least seen Shinobi back in the day. Ninjas and martial arts were everywhere and this game was one of the most popular games in my local arcade for a long time. The C64 version carries off the game really well with looks and some great one button gameplay. The only thing that lets this game down for me is the lack of music, as that would have no doubt bumped this right up near the top of this list. 
In 11th place is Mr. Do. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that this might have been the first arcade game I ever played. It was down my sisters in the Neaton in a working man's club, but unlike up here in the North East, where working men's club were for working men, families were allowed in down there, so every night we would go and I would play this. The C64 version is, apart from the ratio, spot on, and I actually like this more than Boulder Dash, it's so good. 10th place is taken by Hypersports. This is a game that I never really played on in the arcade, as like with Turbo Outrun, I always preferred Track and Field, but it was a different story on the C64. This was, and still is, one of my favourite multi-event games ever made, and it's a game that I still play regularly today. After playing them side by side, I have to say that I actually prefer the C64 version more than the original. Power Drift is in 9th position. Who could forget the hydraulic cabinet for this arcade game? It was so much fun it nearly threw you out of a car when going round corners. Initially, I thought this wouldn't have been able to be converted to the C64, but they did a great job by not being too ambitious and just knocking out a great racing game, something that the Amiga didn't do with their version. In 8th place we have Buggy Boy. This is another game that was massive, and another game that had a unique free screen cabinet. The game was simple, and even as a kid I could get in and enjoy myself. The C64 game again for me is the best of the 8-bit versions, with great fluid sense of movement, and is just the fun to play all round. It's another one that if I had the choice, I would probably play the C64 version over the arcade. 7th place is taken by Rainbow Islands. This is again a game that I don't particularly like, but this isn't about whether I like them or not, it's about how good a port they are, and this is one of the most loved retro games ever made. The C64 version does everything right, the music is perfect, if not better than the arcade. The graphics are good, as were most of the 8-bit versions, and the gameplay does what it's supposed to. Even though it's not my cup of tea, it's plain to say that this is a great port. Rampart is in 6th position. Now this is a weird one because I can't ever remember seeing or playing this in the arcades, but I remember having it on my C64 and I always thought it was just a home system game. The game is a totally awesome strategy game. It's still very playable today which I found out while making this video as I lost an hour playing it last night. In 5th place we have Wizard of War. This is a proper old school arcade game, and although very basic looking, one of the best games on the C64. The Commodore version captured every element from the arcade perfectly, and as it wasn't the most advanced looking game, it looks as good as the arcade too. Wizard of War is one of the most mentioned C64 games in the comments on my channel. 4th place is taken by Commando Arcade. This is a new improved version of the original Commando, and although the original was good, I don't think it would have made the list, as it didn't have all the levels in from the arcade. The new version though is totally awesome with the cutscenes and the intro helicopter, and it also has the option to have the arcade music, although I always stick with the Hubbard classic. Bubble Bobble is in 3rd position, probably the most nostalgic music out of any game in the arcades. This game was so popular it was very difficult to get on, so you can imagine how pleased I was when we got a brilliant home version. Even with the recent remake on the Amstrad, for me this is still the best out of the 8-bit versions, and the Sid music is executed to perfection. In second place we have Ghosts and Goblins Arcade. G, G was one of those games that no matter how many times you played and died, you just kept on putting your money in. It's hard, and as with all hard games, for kids that meant spending a lot of money. When this game was released for a C64, it was good, and even if this remake wasn't made, would have made this list somewhere. But this new game is a near perfect 8-bit version of the game. If you haven't played this version, it's a must play to put on your list. And now, in first place is Donkey Kong Jr. It's not often that a game is actually better on the 8-bits, but what they did with this recent conversion is nothing short of brilliant. The arcade was always in Donkey Kong's shadow, and a lot less known. There was a version for this made in the C64 day, but that game was terrible. This one, however, is perfect. Even more perfect than the arcade if you ask me, and by far the best arcade port I've ever played. Although, I have been playtesting the new Puzzle Bobble that will be released soon, and that one is is as good, if not better than this. Ok that's it for this video, it's nice to get back to some good games after playing the horrors over the last two weeks. 
Let me know in the comments below what your favourite C64 arcade parts are, and if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.